What's up guys, Papa Regal is back in the nest and welcome back to another Storm Ramp video. So to start off this video, I'd like to apologize for not being active for a couple of weeks. I haven't been posting anything because I haven't had time. As you may or may not know, school has just recently ended for me, like literally today. So I had a bunch of finals and projects to uh, actually complete, so that's why I couldn't record any videos. But the winner of the game suggestion poll was Dark Souls 3, so I'll be starting... Oh my goodness. I already got a challenge, so I'll be starting my playthrough of that very soon. I am going on a trip during the summer. I'm sorry, dude, not right now. I am going on a trip during the summer, so um, I'll be scheduling those uploads so that they'll come out um, accordingly during the days. So I won't be doing, um, I won't be making any new videos. I'll have to pre-record them. So just so you know, I'll be doing a Dark Souls 3 playthrough. If you have any objections or something you'd like me to do during the playthrough, please leave it in the comments below. But today. Today is a very special day because, you know, I was thinking, well, Stormbound content is getting a little bit stale. You know, I can keep making custom decks. I can keep doing uh, good strategies and things like that. But, you know, I was thinking. So, um, I, I theorized that using real-life military strategies in Stormbound could actually turn out to be a pretty good idea. So, what I mean by that is real generals and um, army commanders and leaders that have come up with strategies that have been very successful on an actual battlefield in real life. So today, to start that off, we are going to be trying the bull formation. Now, the person who invented the bull formation was known as King Shaka, and he ruled the Zulu people in South Africa. And basically, he was a very fierce leader, um, drilled his troops daily. And so basically, this formation is... Essentially, you look at a bull's head. So there are two horns, one left, one on the right, and they curve outwards and inwards. Oh my goodness, my thing fell off. Also, yes, that home screen is a picture of the Russian president, Boris Yeltsin. Anyways, uh, let me disable that. Okay, so, as I was saying, so King Shaka's bull formation, you have a one of the horns on the left, one of the horns on the right, and they both curve. Now, he used this formation against an English invader. I did forget his name. Uh, basically, this Englishman saw only one part of the horn, and he sent all his troops over there, and he did not see the second part of the horn. The second horn curled around back and killed his troops from behind. So basically, essentially how this is going to work in Stormbound, we're going to be using a swarm deck first. Um, I'll build it right here while I talk. Okay, so essentially how this is going to work in Stormbound, we're going to stack one side really heavy, and then we're going to kind of surprise them by flashing a bunch of really fast cards on the other side so basically what's going to end up happening is they're going to get stressed because they don't know what's going on because i'm going to stack one side with a ton of zoo troops and if you don't know what that is that's basically just troops that are kind of throw away really inexpensive i'm going to stack one side with a ton of zoo troops and then use really speedy troops on the other side to surprise him from behind. All right, so as you can see, I'm building my deck accordingly to fit this. So basically what's gonna happen is, you see all these zoo troops are my lower ones, uh, such as Lawless Herd, Gift of Recruits, North Sea Dog, Shady Ghouls, Swarm Collars, Weapon Sailors, Mischiefs, Pan Heralds, and Red Fawns. Now on the left side, I'm gonna be placing Joust Champions and Grim Couriers, as well as Zuri Lord of Life for some speed. All right, now we're just gonna hop into a battle and see how this does. Actually, we'll change the name of this to uh, the Bullhead. All right. B-U-L-L -L formation. <laughs> All right, let's hop into a battle and see how it does. So additionally, uh, to do more on this series, I was thinking of doing some strategies from Hannibal, uh, the guy who <laughs> was a general from Carthage, and basically he ran into Rome and screwed a bunch of people up for like seven years, no supply lines. Pretty awesome. He had a, great, a bunch of great uh, victories. Um... And also, I was thinking of something like maybe more modern, like Douglas MacArthur, or um, who else is modern? Maybe some of e even Stalin's strategies. But anyways, so that's just some things in the future. If you guys have any great military leaders you'd like me to look up and see if they have any good strategies to use, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I think that'd be really interesting. All right, so to start out, we did spawn a Shady Ghoul and Lawless Herd. He used Call Militia and spawned some gifted recruits of his own. So that's a decent enough counter. What we're going to do, we're just going to spawn um, West Wind Sailors and North Sea Dog right there. So basically our plan right now, we're going to try to stack the right side. Actually, no. We're going to stack left side, I think. Even though those West Wind Sailors are more on the right side, um, that has to do with the fact that I want to advance my front line. But now we're going to start the strategy up. Okay. So debug logger. Oh, I should have upgraded these Grim Couriers. Uh, I'm stupid. All right. Well, that's fine. 
Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna spawn those dudes, our mischiefs, start stack the left side. We're gonna replace the Grim Couriers because we don't need their speed yet. And we can't spawn anything, so we're just gonna have to end our turn. Now, he's pushed back a decent bit. He's gonna spawn Westwind Sailors to counter, and then we'll see what he follows up with. Finite Loopers, okay. Decent strategy. You know. All right, now it's my turn. We're kind of even, so I kind of have to block this, which is unfortunate. I have to go away from my strategy, but we haven't really committed to anything yet. So I'm changing it to now we're going to attempt to stack right side because he hasn't done anything yet to make us think this. So basically, um, the strategy will come into effect once we achieve like basically above 10 mana because that will allow us to just continue stacking and also, um, also move up on the left side, like get those rushes in. All right, he's gonna use snow masons and call militia, and that's gonna be okay. He's they spawned in a decent spot for me, you know, nothing too bad. Okay, what we're gonna do here? Hmm, let's see, what should we do? We're gonna spawn Zuri Lord of Life, I think. He's gonna rush up, give us some strength. So this is continuing our theme of stacking right side, and we're just gonna jump in there with some gifted recruits to soften his troops up. Uh, as well as we're going to replace the swarm callers. Okay, so, so far it's going pretty well. We have all our troops stacked on the right side. Uh, that's what we want. Now the one thing I'm worried about is those final loopers are going to spawn at a weird angle. They're either going to go left or down, and I don't want them to go left. So, I'm going to have to do something to block that. Alright, but we can figure that out later. I'm going to spawn Lawless Herd here, West Wind Sailors right there. Basically, we, we uh, forced his Finite Loopers to spawn over there on the right side rather than the left or down. Uh, now what we're going to do additionally is we're going to spawn some Pan Heralds to give some strength. So these guys right here, this Lawless Herd, is actually kind of uh, messing us up a little bit because he's going to think that there might be some enemy troops coming in on the left side. And we don't want that. We want him to think that we're all for the right side, and we're going to keep pushing. So we're going to keep that going. Uh, we're going to see if we can make sure that he doesn't see it coming. All right, this dude's being really annoying. Spawn some overchargers. Um, now, what we're going to do, we're just going to spawn mischiefs here. I'll do that one, one damage. Good stuff. Um... We can't really use our Dreadfawn, so we're going to spawn Shady Ghoul and hope he goes to the right. Oh, come on! Alright, strategy's falling apart a little bit, because we're getting unlucky with the random spawns. Alright, um... Well, there's still more troops on the right side, more net troops, so I think we're it's going to keep going well. Now, we do have our Joust Champions and Grim Couriers, so we can push up super far if we want to. But, we don't have anything to attack yet, so we'll have to wait and see what he does. Now, on the next battle, I'm going to definitely try to um, start stacking on purpose. Like, this time, it didn't really go as planned, so we'll try it again in another battle in this video. And hopefully, I'll be able to show you guys that is effective. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to replace Grim Couriers, because I don't see a lot of use for them. Uh, then we're going to spawn Joust Champions, and that's going to use a lot of our mana. And... We're just going to let that guy pass on the right side, or on the left side. Now, the reason I'm doing that, obviously, normally I want to kill him. We're going to let him pass so that our enemy uh, defends only on our right side because he won't think there's a threat coming in from the left. Now, this is actually going along pretty well. He has, I haven't seen him really buff up his left side troops that much. Maybe he'll do it now. No, okay. So he's falling into our trap. He's spawning all of his cards to counter ours. Ooh, that could be an issue. Alright, we'll have to block that, actually. But, he's kind of falling into the trap. He spawned all his cards to block ours instead of attack. Now what we're going to do, we're going to replace those dudes. <laughs> what are they called? I forgot. Um, additionally, we're going to spawn a Lawless Herd here. Spawn Westwind Sailors up there to block the... Um, What's it called? The Machine Workshop. And Pan Heralds. They'll buff up our uh, right side stacks and hopefully prevent him from attacking very. from attacking completely directly on our right side. Now, what he'll probably do is clear up the left side so the Mech Workshop can start spawning. 
and that's fine we just need to equal out okay so he spawned his veterans of war that's fine by me uh we don't really need to bother with that actually they've only got four all right now snow masons are gonna give some decent buffs uh but this is actually our time to shine okay now if you don't know what i mean let me enlighten you so what we're gonna do just to start we're gonna spawn the shady ghoul up here just to push up a little bit hopefully we'll spawn to the right okay or up that's fine as well uh now what we're gonna do we're gonna spawn dread fonts here i know this doesn't fit exactly with the description but now we're gonna combo with zuri lord of life and he'll drop those health bombs all over and so now essentially what's happening we've taken the middle and we split his troops in half um this is actually going pretty well. Obviously, we're not stacking complete right side, but I'll say this is when we've closed the trap, okay? We cleared out his troops, and we're closing them. Now, he can obviously spawn some more, and he's going to spawn debug loggers. Now, that's kind of a mistake, because they won't grab any strength. Victors of the melee will be extremely effective in taking me out, so that's kind of a, it's kind of an L. Um, now, what can we do additionally? Okay, so problems that we have to identify here. Mech Workshop is going to be an issue. These dudes over here, the Battle Knights, they'll be an issue. Okay, to pick... Hmm. Let's pick apart his base. Alright, we're going to attack that Mech Workshop there. Replace Grim Couriers. We don't need to push up any more than we already are. Uh, spawn those Joust Champions. We're going to take him out once again. Kind of trying to make it appear as though we have more troops on the right side. Uh, now, a good bit of this strategy actually comes from a little bit of deception, actually. So, if you can make it seem like you've got more troops on the right side, they'll be more inclined to block on the right side. So, that's where part of our strategy comes from. We're going to try to make it look like we got a ton of stuff. And that's kind of what I meant by spawning the zoo creatures. Spawning more zoo troops on the right side would make it appear as though we have more. Well, we actually don't. But that didn't kind of that didn't really work out so well, as we got unlucky with some RNG, and he spawned the mech workshop. So he did a thing that uh, actually occurs in a lot of sports, and obviously this is a little bit random. But basically, uh, this especially happens in hockey. So he employed a strategy where he split the ice. He moved. All right, this will be in hockey terms. He moved the puck from the strong side to the weak side. Now, strong side is where most of the players or troops in this case are stationed and that's what he did he transferred the sides so basically that opens up more opportunities for him to pass uh, in hockey terms obviously for him to pass or to um move elsewhere and that was actually a very good play on his part because it, it definitely opened him up a lot makes him less susceptible to all-out attack but now what we're actually going to do is we're just going to decide to Try to split him again. We're going to go straight up the middle and see how that works out. So we do have our troops on the right and left flanking, which should be good. They'll protect us from a lot of damage uh, that he could inflict by going on left and right side. He'll probably try to spawn a mech workshop on the left side. It'll be a mistake, though, because I'll easily be able to push up and block it. Um, then, oh, yeah, see, predicted, easy. Okay, then after that, uh, he'll probably spawn his Veterans of War and call Militia... And let's see, one other, maybe victors of the melee if you got them. Debug loggers, once again, they'll actually be able to gain their strength. They'll be right back up to a good old 5 health. That's perfectly okay with me. Snow Masons for the combo, and then Call Militia is probably going to finish off his turn. Never mind, he didn't have it in his hand. I'm cool with that. <sighs> uh, what can we do? So, our, these guys are going to crash, and that goes in my favor, actually. Snow Masons are going to activate their effect. But guess what? We can mess him up. Uh, we're going to replace that. We're going to spawn... Hmm. I'm trying to combo. I'm trying to figure out how I could combo this. Um. Alright, we're just going to break his mech workshop. I don't want that messing about in my business. Uh, we're going to spawn a Shady Ghoul here. Deal that one damage. Now, we're going to spawn... Yes, that's a good idea, right? Yes. Uh, they'll gain four strength, I believe. Yes, four strength. And then we're going to spawn Zuri, Lord of Life, to drop a health bomb on these Seder Warriors. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> I'm stupid. I was thinking that it worked like Eloth, but no. Okay. So, oof. We could have gotten plus two strength on those guys. All right. Well, that's fine. Okay. He's going to spawn victors of melee probably left side. No, nope, in the middle right there. Okay. That's a good idea. Good crowd control, actually. Now, we got to employ more of King Shaka's strategy. Okay. Right now, he's too, e too able to split us. 
by attacking both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to definitely start to really push right side. And now he's actually done that as well, incidentally or not. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Alright, we're going to replace Grim Couriers. We got our Joust Champions, our Jousty Boys. Uh, we're going to spawn them up there. They're going to deal their damage. I should really find a way to upgrade them, but you know. Now we're going to spawn Zerg Lord of Life. He's going to drop some HP bombs. Boom, boom. All right, there we go. Plus four total HP, and we're going to spawn North Sea Dog over here. Now, this was literally designed to stress him out and begin to block on the right side. Now, he already used his victims in the melee, like, last turn, so he shouldn't have them back again. Nothing he can do to really get rid of both of these at the same time. So I'm predicting that he will probably go with um, maybe Veterans of War on the left side, like in the second column up near the top. Overchargers will be effective as well. He'll use them to deal one damage. That was kind of a mistake, though. He could have done it way better. Finite Loopers. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this dude's doing. He's not getting very much worth out of his cards. He could have attacked from the left column. That would have been much more effective. But he didn't. And then he also made the mistake of letting my Joust Champions get their attack again. But as you can see, this actually worked completely in our favor. He's He didn't spawn any troops on the left side. Now, we're going to be totally able to exploit this and turn it way over into our favor. So to start, we're going to spawn Mischiefs. They'll cancel out. Um, that's good for us. Now, we're going to spawn... Let's see. Uh, we're going to require some luck here, actually. We are going to end up spawning... What do I want? Wait, does this guy count as a satyr? No, he counts as a dragon. Okay, we're going to spawn... Awesome! Dreadfawn spawned exactly how I wanted it to. We're going to spawn these um, swarm collars there. They'll push up. And then for the massive combo, pushing right side, we're just going to give the Pan Heralds. They'll give a plus 5 strength in total to all my surrounding units. And this should end up being a very strong attack that he may not be able to defend, actually. He's only got 5 HP left on his base, and his upgrades are not too good. So... I'm feeling fairly confident. I know normally I get kicked in the butt when I say I feel fairly confident, but this time I feel fairly confident. So he spawned heroic soldiers. They're going to push up Veterans of War as well. He's going to use them to block Zuri Lord of Life eventually. Um, let's see what else he's going to do. Snow Masons, then if he has it, call from Lisha or gifted recruits. That's what I'm predicting for his turn. Uh, let's see. No, ended it. He didn't have the cards. Okay. He couldn't cut it. So, what's going to happen now is I'm going to actually swap through my deck and hopefully we can find some Joust Champions or something. We're going to replace Law's Herd. Nope, no Joust Champions. Ah, oh, uh, shame. Okay, well, what we're going to do now is we're just going to attack his base directly. Uh, that's always a good idea. Now, what we're going to do additionally is we're going to spawn Westman Sailors here. They'll take care of everything on that side and we're going to continue stacking right side now the reason i spawned that north sea dog bottom right corner instead of a uh, third column second row is because i want it to appear that we're going really heavy on the right side so he doesn't think about the left side at all um we'll see what he does though he's got a decent opportunity to defend if he uh takes out these satyr warriors up here top left uh gift recruits are going to complete that mission he's only got one left though victors of the melee are probably going to be going on right side probably inside yes okay uh, that's going to deal a lot of damage, 8 damage in total, but we're going to take them out next turn. Debug Loggers are actually going to end up getting their buff back. Uh, plus 2 strength, I believe. Yes. Alright, plus 2 strength. And Westman Sailor, she's going to stack those. Oh, come on, man. He's going to stack those uh, a little bit left side, and they're going to rush in. Alright, now, what he did not expect, though, was the Grim Couriers, because nobody uses them. Um, we could theoretically attack his base... But I don't have mine high enough level to really uh, make that effective. So we're going to spawn Joust Champions instead. They're going to rush up, deal a lot of damage. I know I probably could have killed him this turn. I don't need you in the comments. Uh, we're going to spawn Dreadfonts here. Hopefully they'll spawn one down. Okay, that works. Uh, then we're going to spawn Zerg Lord of Life to drop some more HP bombs on our dudes. There we go. Plus six strength in total. That's going to be great. Zerg Lord of Life is going to push all the way up to the base. So he has no choice but to defend that or die. Wow, that sounded really morbid, didn't it? All right, well, uh, what we're going to do next is watch. Wow, I thought it was my turn again. Oh, Siren of the Sea is pulling that out of the hat really late. Okay, so he's going to deal the two damage. We're going to take half. Uh, then he's going to deal another three damage, or she, my apologies. And they're going to cancel out. So basically, Siren of the Seas was basically useless. I'm surprised why he used that there. I wasn't that effective. Now he's going to spawn those Battle Knights over on the left side with Call for 
call militia, and find out loopers are going to spawn backwards. So that actually definitely worked in our favor. Uh, Overchargers additionally are going to deal one damage to these dreadfawns up here. They're going to cancel out, and he, we're going to have one strength left on those. Okay, now what we're going to do, this is where we get to our finishing move, I believe. Uh, we're going to... Hmm, should we replace storm colors? No, we're going to replace lawless herd. Now, mischiefs are going to push all the way up. I think that was a good play. Uh, we're gonna, additionally, we are going to spawn these guys, Swarm Callers. No, I didn't get any value on them. My apologies. Now, we're going to spawn the Pan Heralds here as well. And North Sea Dog in the right back just to uh, kind of add to that pressure. All right, so it's his turn. He has no choice but to attack the Mischiefs or die. Once again, Victors of the Melee probably are going to be coming in on third column. Going to deal six damage in total. Snow Masons as well, and probably um, Veterans of War. That's my prediction. All right, so Victors of the Melee, first one correct. Yes, uh, third column, easy. Six damage in total. Then he's got an opening. Veterans of War, also prediction. Uh, let's see, what else is he going to spawn? Snow Masons, maybe? Oh, so heroic Soldiers mixed it up a little bit. No more mana for Snow Masons, so that means my prediction is wrong. Gift of Recruits are going to be thrown down as well. He's thrown down the gauntlet, boys and girls. No, you're all boys. <laughs> In my Google Analytics, it says all of you are male, so that's kind of funny, actually. Uh, let's spawn Dreadfawns here. Yes, Dreadfawns here. Okay, we got to be confident in our moves. Otherwise, what are we? Not confident in our moves. That's what we are. We're going to replace those, uh, and we're going to get Crim Couriers. Man, I really wish I had those upgraded, but I don't because I'm bad. Uh, let's see, what can we do? We're just gonna spawn them right here. They'll deal two damage. That's that's really nothing. But now the important thing is we actually stalled his victors of melee. They aren't gonna get to use their effect again, and we're gonna take them out next turn. No problem. Okay. Now essentially what's going on here is we're gonna end up chipping him to death. Because uh King Shaka's strategy didn't work too well. Now this video is running all along uh it's running long so if you guys would like to see another strategy with the bowl formation please let me know in the comments below and i will definitely make a second video because this one was running very long um additionally any other strategies leave it in the comments and if you have any comments concerns or questions about the dark souls 3 play playthrough that's coming up please let me know okay he's gonna spawn debug loggers and that's a big mistake by him because he's actually left a major opening which we will use to kill him oh that is oh that makes me angry okay well we can fix that and three two what wait handshake and finish ah there we go fellas so I'm not sure if that win was attributed to the strategy I was employing or maybe just like me being a better player. I don't know. We're going to get our 50 coin bonus and we're going to roll up to one star on 23. Complete a couple quests. We're going to collect those. Uh, what else can we do? Nothing. Oh, Grim Couriers. We're actually going to buy these. I need them. Wait. Wait. I've been jabated. I could have upgraded them. Okay, so we're actually going to upgrade them right now. Grim Couriers, get upgraded, fool. Alright, cool. Now they're going to have three. That makes them way more effective, actually. So I'm very happy about that. And additionally, we are gonna just going to go to the shop and buy one because I have a feeling I'm not going to get them in packs very often. Alright, well, and once more, we're going to check the friends list. I think there's about like 120 of you in here, which is pretty crazy. Also, our subscriber count is like 430 or something, like 430, I mean. So thank you guys for that. All right, looks like that's going to wrap up the video. If you'd like to see another video using King Shaka's uh, bull formation strategy, please let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. No, I'm sorry, Andrew. I can't do this right now. Uh, don't forget to leave a like. It'd be cool if you leave a comment. It'd be super. You subscribe. See you guys next time.